Hey everybody, welcome. This is a review of chapter three. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to quickly go over what we already learned. So if you remember this last chapter that we read was about how the British were establishing their empire in the new world. So the first part of this chapter dealt with the competition between the British and other empires and then the expansion of the empire of the British. So you might remember this question about how did the British expand their empire. Then we went into the origins of American slavery, which is that part that we talked about in class about how indentured servants went on to give way to black African slavery. And then we learned a little bit about the crises that happened in the colonies, things such as the uh, witch crisis in Salem and things of that sort, right? So if we keep going here, we'll find that we also reviewed a little bit about the, the way that the colonies were shaped. In other words, who came to the colonies, who were the immigrants that came here to colonial America. And the final part of this chapter dealt with the social classes in these uh, colonies. So people, gender roles, which people were at the top of the social classes, etc. Right. So that's essentially chapter three. Now, if you look here, this is a little preview of chapter four. So in chapter four, what we're going to be learning about is, as Foner titles it, slavery, freedom and the struggle for empire. So let's let's talk a little bit about this, because in this chapter, what you're going to be looking at is how slavery helped the British Empire grow. What kinds of enslavement and what kinds of activities led to the most profitable uh, empire ventures for the British. We're also going to learn about how these enslaved people still manage to maintain their culture, their religion, their language, and ways that they resisted slavery, which to me is honestly the most interesting part of this chapter. The way that these people established themselves as people rather than just objects for sale and trade. It's amazing to me. The author Foner is going to t tell you a little bit about the ways that the empire the british empire is establishing the roles of freedom so going to tell you a little bit about concepts like liberalism and republicanism early forms of interpreting freedom and interpreting uh, the kind of self-rule that a lot of the people in the colonies wanted to have he's going to tell you a little bit about the way that these people sort of organize themselves in the public sphere which means how did they form committees where did they go vote things of that nature. He's going to lead you into a conversation again into a very important topic called the Great Awakening, which is sort of this religious revival that is going to take place in the colonies around the turn of the 18th century. And so in this sense, the chapter is is uh, packed with a lot of information about the way that the public is viewing their role in the empire. And, and their freedom in the empire. Foner is then going to in, introduce you to the rivalries that the empire had, especially the French, being that this chapter does deal with the French and Indian War, which is going to be the conclusion of this chapter, where he's going to tell you all about that war between the French, their Indian allies, and the British and their Indian allies. So the French and Indian War, right? French and Indian War. So this is a little preview of chapter four. Now, the the chapter is divided into seven subsections, but uh, in class, we're going to be discussing just a few of these, just a handful of these. Uh, so please make sure that you read the chapter thoroughly and that you take notes while you read. Thanks.